What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Alex. Shout out to the Elite Fleet. Make sure you like and subscribe so you can become a member of the Elite Fleet. And today we're going to talk about how the internet created incels and how it actually makes them worse instead of healing them. Because the internet could be a place where incels come to get healed, to be uplifted, to be told how to come out of their situations. But oftentimes, they just get confirmation bias. Some of that's the content creator's fault. Some of that is their fault. But what we're going to do is we're going to break down this video from Vice that they did on incels. I'm going to break down to you guys step by step how the internet played a major part in creating the incel in the first place and how they did it. And why I say the internet is doing more to make the incel worse than it is to really help the incel. And if there is any incels who run across this video, I highly, highly, highly suggest that you subscribe to this channel. You join the elite fleet because up here, we're all about uplifting. Up here, we're all about talking about how there are multiple ways to skin a cat. We're all about that up here. All right. And we'll get more into that a little bit as the video goes because I'll be pointing out several things that aren't often told to incels or even just people who generally deal in these types of communities about all the ways they can come out and get ahead with women besides the traditional means that they think is just looks and money. So without further ado, let's get straight into our reaction. Let's Multiple go. government buildings, Ellie. My name is Spot, S-P-A-F-T. I live in the United Kingdom. Within the next few months, I'm going to firebomb the things. Remember that. And if you don't report me to the police, it's on your conscious, honey. <laughs> This is a kind of sarcastic bit. This is a performance for the cameras and for me, a woman, because this is a chat room of incels, virgins spread across three continents. Most of the world was introduced to incels when Elliot Roger killed six people at UC Santa Barbara in 2014. Police didn't have to search long to learn what motivated a 22-year-old gunman to kill six people and injure seven others. Before doing so, he posted a 141-page manifesto, mostly blaming women for not having sex with him. I will slaughter every single spoiled, stuck-up, blonde slut. It made him a hero among some incels. Then, in Toronto in April, Alec Manassian praised Roger on Facebook before driving a van into a crowd of people, killing 10. Alec Manassian wasn't part of a terrorist group, but it may not be as simple as suggesting he was a lone wolf. I want to stop the video right here because she's already pointing out an important thing. People just think incels and they just think guys on the internet complaining about not being able to clap cheeks. But you guys have to understand first and foremost that incels are dangerous. These are not a group of people you want to gather together unless you're gathering them together to flood them with positive reinforcement and offer them new ways to win. But to just bring them together with confirmation bias, which is the easy route that a lot of content creators take, because a lot of the incel community, they will support anyone who gives them confirmation bias, right? It's what I like to call incel prawn. What is incel prawn? Only bringing up OnlyFans models and prawn stars onto your show or only having topics about them, right? If a woman has a high body count and dresses sleazy and slutty and is a thought, only talking about those types of women, right? Anytime a woman fails or she does anything goofy or something blows back in her face, laughing at that, all right? Conglomerating and laughing about anything that goes bad for women. Constantly harping on the divorce rate while never talking about the successful marriages that are still going. All this is incel prime. So what happens is, and the problem with it is, you're giving them all this reinforcement, right? Okay, women are thoughts and sluts and they all are only fans and they're all selling it and only sleeping with the top tier guys and look at this woman, you know, she lost her job or look at this woman, she got beat up or whatever the case may be, right? When you're only giving them that, you're not helping them come out of their rage. You're forward reinforcing their rage by reminding them that these women don't want them and not acknowledging all the groups of women who could. And by bringing up and laughing at when these women fail or when these women are harmed. And then these guys go out into the streets, right? And I did a story on this. They'd be like that one guy who jumped on that girl wearing a sundress at Walmart because her butt was so fat and he couldn't handle it. He was so damn out of control. He's like, ah, and he dived on her. And it took three men, not one, not two, but three men to pull them off. It creates situations like she put in the video where dudes get so mad about women not sleeping with them. Imagine the level of entitlement you had to get through these social channels, right? And it's not just content creators. These guys go to Reddit. They get kicked off Reddit, but they still go to Reddit and other forums. But imagine how entitled you have to be 
to literally feel like I'm going to go on a rampage and I'm going to delete women because they don't want to sleep with me. Not because they said anything bad about me, not because they're bullying or terrorizing me, just because they don't want to sleep with me. To go and drive a car through seven people because women don't want to sleep with you because you can't get laid. And the crazy thing is you acknowledge the existence of prostitutes and prawn stars. You could just pay for this. But you don't do that either. You don't do that either. And I wanted to point out the show. Even the guy who fell through the roof at LA Fitness that I talked about. He was up there peeping. He's like, ah, and he fell out of the roof in the girl's bathroom. These guys are potentially dangerous. What you're doing is hoarding together, right? A bunch of men who are mentally unstable, need support, need someone to show them another way, giving them more confirmation bias to what they already believe about women and more confirmation bias as to why they will never be able to get one until instead of solutions as to how they could get one. And then washing your hands of it when they go out and commit these crimes. A lot of the dude who did the new um, subway treatment was linked to what? MGTOW, Manspear, different things where they talk that intel stuff. And then everybody wants to wash their hands over. Well, we don't tell them to do that. You don't have to directly tell them to do it. You need to realize these people have a mental problem. So again, if you're not offering new ways to win, in the words of Andre 3000, a dolphin going to shake his fin, regardless if he's in or out of water, because the most important thing for him is to swim. So if you're not offering these people new ways to win, you are just further incising they're delusion, which is going to lead to violence, right? But there's way more points to get to here and way more to talk about. Let's continue. What is an incel? It's involuntarily celibate. Um, it's just something you are. You know, volcel is voluntarily celibate. Incel is involuntarily celibate, meaning you've tried many times and failed. And then there's mental cells, which is probably the best fits me, someone who, who can't form a relationship because of mental blockage. What have you been diagnosed as? Uh, agoraphobia, obsessive compulsive disorder, social anxiety, social paranoia, that's not even a thing. Joey is 23 years old. He doesn't have a job, he's not in school. Now, this is another very important point to stop the video at. All right, now he goes, there's incels, and then there's mencels, and then there's volcels. Volcels are voluntarily celibate, and incels are involuntarily celibate, and then you have men cells which basically means they don't have the mental capacity to have a relationship first of all that's too many damn cells that's my damn problem with the red pill they got a red pill they got a purple pill they got a black pill they got every drug in the damn drugstore oh you're somebody come on my channel oh you blue pill you a simp then on the next video they're like oh you red pill then they go i don't know what to call you because you switch up so much i don't know if you're red pill you blue pill purple pill black pill i can't tell that's because i'm a human there is no pill that would ever be able to define me because as a human, I am complex. On top of that, I'm one of very few balanced people on the world who can understand how multiple things exist on one plane and multiple people might want multiple things for different reasons. And I can humanize with pretty much any reason, even if I don't agree with it. And I can tell you how to work with what you're trying to do. See, everything has to be black and white in these communities because you're this cell or you're that cell or you're that pill or you're this pill. It has to go this way. Again, no new ways to win. What if you combine this pill with that pill and then that one? Oh, I don't, I don't know. We only could combine red and blue. I don't know what happens if you combine red, blue, and black and yellow or whatever else. Whatever other pills there is. Another very important thing. The man is 23 years old. He has no job. All right? He's not in school. He barely ever even goes outside. Not in the gym. We could start there with him. Bro, before you even worry about women, the hell with women. We need to get you a job, all right, get you working. All right, we need to get you outside, in the gym, touching grass, bro, off that damn computer, which is full of nothing but toxicity. And we need to get you socializing, even if you're socializing with other people who have the same mental disorders that you do. That's still a form of socializing. It's still getting out and about. You guys have to understand, breathing fresh air, Letting the sun hit you and downloading that information. It's already set. I'm pointing to it and it's not out there, but I digress. Letting the sun hit you, talking to people, even if they have your same issue. Why do you guys think they have special classes in school? Because you still need to interact. So if you have to act, interact with someone who's special like you're special, that's fine. As long as you're interacting. This man is interacting in a toxic manner 
through an online forum where he's just constantly being fed the same narrative and no one's telling him anything different. If the man went outside and he started socializing and he got himself a job and he started hitting the gym, women would just come to him. Women would just come to him. If you actually watch this video, you will see most of the women are saying, it's not even that these dudes aren't attractive. It's not that these dudes aren't attractive. They're just perpetual losers because they're stuck in a loser mentality that they will not come out of. No one else is offering them new ways to win. Right? And they're not doing what they need to do to get in position to be able to do what they want to do. They're just sitting online, basking in the negativity. That's what they're doing. Most of these dudes who was incels, if they just got out and about, they would win. But I'm not going to get too much into that because it goes into something else that's going to be expressed later in the video. But a lot of dudes nowadays, man, I'm going to make a whole other video about this, but a lot of dudes nowadays, they struggle with likability more than anything else. And this is straight from the mouth of a woman, and we're going to talk about that. But not being likable, not being someone a woman want to hang around. Has nothing to do with money and status and any of that. You're just not likable. And the only way you can become likable is by one, having the confidence to be yourself, but two, socializing and going outside. And even if it just starts with one person and you work your way up to two, it's the only way. But let's continue with the video because it gets deep. Are incels violent? I don't think they're, they're really violent. They're very meek. And when an incel attacks, it's not the same type of thing as when Dylan Roof shot up that church or when ISIS blows people up. Those are perhaps more masculine. These are like docile men who have like this bottled up thing and then it comes out as an outburst of anger. But I think that that's uncommon. People joke about killing women. That's, that, those, that's a higher percentage. People who joke about killing women. The jokes were ambiguous enough that Reddit banned its incel forum last November for violating its policy against inciting violence. Now, I also want to stop the video right there because he said, well, these aren't traditionally masculine men, so it's not like they're going to go out there and blow anyone up or do anything too drastic. Most of it's just jokes. Ha, ha, ha. Hardy, hardy, ha. Let me, guys tell, let me tell you guys something. There's nothing more dangerous than a meek man, a weak man, or a feminine man. This is why I tell you guys a lot of times, you should be extremely alarmed and on guard when you're around hood dudes because most dudes from the hood were raised by single mothers which means this is a grown man with the emotional control of a woman he is capable of anything this is the dude who will shoot you for stepping on his shoe a masculine man is not going to shoot you for stepping on his shoe especially when nine out of ten times you did not step on his shoe on purpose but a weak man a meek man a single mother raised man absolutely will Absolutely will. You also have to understand, and coming off of the hood dudes who I use as one example, a meek man, a weak man, and a feminine man will run his mouth and feel like he has to say everything that he thinks, but he's not going to fight, and he can't back it up, which puts him in a corner where now he's afraid for his life. A person who's afraid for their life, again, is capable of doing anything, including stabbing, killing, Right, shooting, any any variant or you could think of of eliminating someone or taking someone out. What do women do all the time when it comes to emotional control? They have none. They hit, they swing, they spit, they'll bust the windows out your car by their own words. And you think a meek, effeminate man is less dangerous? We have the capacity to bust the windows out your car because you said or did something he didn't like. We just seen a woman try to get an NFL player deleted. And lied and said he put his hands on her just because she thought he was cheating. She didn't even catch him. And you think a man with that mindset is less dangerous? Nah, he's more dangerous. That's the problem. See, they dudes go and gas these incels up like they're talking to regular masculine men under the pressure that all oh, these dudes ain't going to really do none of that. But these dudes are going to really do all of that most of the time. But with that being said, let's continue. Incels believe in a strange cosmology where a male archetype named Chad talks to women with ease and is rewarded with sex. Incels define themselves in opposition to this as too ugly or awkward and resent women for falling for the Chads of the world. Before we came here, I told you to just be yourself. And you said that was a joke. The joke was like, uh, you know, he's some skinny loser and Chad does something awesome and he goes, hey man, how do you do it? And the guy, Chad just goes, just be yourself, man. Chad doesn't realize that, you know, his good looks or his muscles or his financial status or social status are what get, get, make him successful and what uh, get him friends. He doesn't realize that. He thinks it's just 
his personality that does that. It's just virtue of him being him. Incels think that without a stigma on female sexuality, women will sleep with countless high-status chads, leaving the remaining 80% of men sexless and resentful. And now here comes the played out Chad and Tyrone stereotype. This is the part of the video I really couldn't wait to get to. Because everything these dudes think about the Chads and the Tyrones and the Ray Rays and, you know, <laughs> the Latin Kings, the Triads, whatever you want to call it. It's uh, what you might call it. Everything they think is not true. I mean, if you really was to pay attention to those slides that they had going, one of them literally said, Chad does nothing. Chad says nothing. He doesn't talk, he doesn't go on dates, and women just come to him. You're out of your damn mind. Then he goes on to say what Chad thinks. He's like, just talk, bro. Just be yourself, bro. He doesn't realize that it's his uh, his looks or his uh, his his muscles or his, his financial status that puts him in position to do these things. They completely eliminate how many ugly dudes there are, how many fat dudes there are, how many broke dudes there are, how many dudes there are that are a combination of all three. Any man who gets women have run around men, been around men who get women who do have this. Bro, when I was in high school, the fattest dude in the school was the funniest dude in the school. He was the class ground, got all the chicks. I know dudes who don't have a dollar to their name. I grew up around dudes don't got a dollar to their name, bounce from woman's house to woman's house to woman's house. Never on their own. Never left alone. I know dudes don't got an inch of muscle on their body can go out here and get women. So when they say these things, and one of the most important things he goes, they think it's all this other, other stuff. They don't realize it's their looks and their, per mask, their financial status and their muscles that's getting the women. Let me tell you guys something. This is a gym. I've said this before, but not in this video. No man is getting a woman without a personality. Let that breathe. Run it back. No man is getting a woman without a personality unless he caught her out of the bar and she's drunk as a skunk, which you should never do because that's a case waiting to happen, especially if it's a Becky. But no man has ever got a woman to the bedroom with no personality. It does not happen. Because it doesn't matter how attractive you are, how big your muscles are, how much money you got. Women are going to have to get to know you on some level. Right? Now she doesn't have to form an emotional connection with you. Right? She doesn't have to love you or really even like you, but she's going to have to make sure that you got your head on straight. Every now and then you might run into a slur who just wants to get her back blown up, but the vast majority of women are going to force some type of conversation with you. Even if it's a 10 minute conversation, even if it's a conversation during Netflix and chill before she lets you wham bam her and thank you ma'am her, she's going to force some kind of conversation with you because women are social creatures. Any dude who gets women will tell you that. So you can have all the muscles, but if you say something stupid, a woman is gone like that. You can have all the looks. You can't hold her attention. She finds another attractive man. She's gone like that. The only way to circumvent having a personality of some sort when it comes to women is to just pay them directly. Is to just pay them directly. Now, again, there will be some women out here who will sleep with you just because you look good. But most of the time, they're going to make sure... That you're at least not weird and creepy and can hold a conversation before they're going to sleep with you. And most dudes will tell you that. So the idea that this Chad's just walking around and women are just jumping his bones is crazy. Now again, she doesn't have to love you. She doesn't even have to like you. You might be an idiot, right? <laughs> With big muscles and a big Johnson. But you can hold a conversation. You don't seem creepy. Okay, I can go ahead and let him be. You don't just walk around getting women and sleeping with women. Here's what's even funnier. This fool failed to realize, and this is one of the biggest gems of the video, he's been talking to a woman this entire time. And he's been holding her attention this entire time. He's been talking to a woman and holding her attention this entire segment. Making direct eye contact. And this woman seemed like she's a little bit odd herself, a little bit weird herself. And she's been sitting there with you one-on-one. -on -one. She's been completely comfortable. Not 100% one-on-one because there was a guy behind the camera. But she's been completely comfortable. And you've been using your personality this whole time. 
She's interviewing a group of men who go out and literally eliminate women. Most of who can't stand women and she's completely comfortable, even smiled a few times talking to you and ain't no one else in that room but you. If you had the right people around you, you'd be like, damn, I can get a woman like that. You could probably get her. Not literally, but a woman like her, you could probably get her. Oh, my mentality blocks me. You sure? Because you're doing a pretty good job from what I can see. But let's go ahead and wrap this video up. Women who have had sex with, uh, you know, 100 plus men, and now they're kind of ostracized from their communities, and they feel that they were kind of lied to by a feminist progressive society that told them it's okay to flaunt your sexuality. But that just seems kind of like a cartoon to me. Like, I, I don't actually know in my personal life many women who've slept with hundreds and hundreds of You don't? Of men. That's... You should interview girls 22, 23 right now and ask them how many partners they've had. And this is part of the reason why I said the internet created the incel. Because you guys have to understand, why does he think every woman has been with that many men? Because of the internet. Because when you go down that incel pipeline, you run into channels where they only interview, they only talk about, they only acknowledge women who've been with that many men. They don't acknowledge any other type of woman. And here's the next thing. See, he's aware of this because of the internet. Like, for example, let me give you guys a good example. When I was in school, right? When I was in school, the dudes who didn't get laid had no idea what the women were up to, right? Like when I was in high school, for example, I played on the football team. Everybody who played on the football team or the basketball team already knew how women were getting down, right? Not all of them, but a good portion of them. The dudes who didn't play and they had, they weren't involuntary celibate because the women just weren't sleeping with anyone. It was as hard for every other man as it was for them. They had no idea really how much easier it was for the athletes and the hood guys, and even the dudes who didn't know it was easier for the athletes and the hood guys, they still said, well, the average regular guys are struggling, so we're good, right? Now, when I got to college, it's kind of the same thing. Okay, I'm not getting no V-Box. A lot of dudes ain't getting no V-Box. No big deal. Now, because of the internet, right? Because even back then, most of the athletes and the hood dudes, they would get chicks. You didn't see them with all the chicks. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to point out. Now, because of the internet, these dudes are coming out of line and seeing dudes with their inbox full, 200, 300, 100 matches. Dudes with like five, six, seven chicks all over the place, right? And now they're feeling like, damn, well, 80% of the women are talking to 20% of the men. We're left out. We don't got nowhere to go. We can't get it. Oh, my gosh. We, we can't get nothing. We can't get nothing. Let me tell you guys something. 80% of men do not feel like they can't get women. I'm going to let y'all know that right now. So that number is completely skewed. And the other problem with that number is these guys, most of the time, oftentimes, I start hitting women with version rules. Start hitting women with you can't have kids rules. Start hitting women with dress size rules. Start hitting women with makeup rules. You guys understand what I'm saying? They'll have all these damn rules. And I'm like, damn, well, a beggar can't be a chooser. So if you're telling me you can't get female attraction at all, how the hell are you going to then come with all these rules to what type of woman you would deal with? The 80 20 rule only exists for two reasons. One, because the internet and these dudes are seeing how the top tier men, because let me tell you something, only really the top tier men are going to come on the internet and talk about dating and relationships for the most part, right? I used to tell everybody, I like to call myself the regular everyday man who's talking about it, but no one will let me do that because I make too much money and apparently I look too good. That's fine. But generally, only the top percentage of men are going to come online even talking about relationships. So your opinion is skewed based off of that. Two, 80% of men don't feel like they're left out. It's an internet talking point. No one thought these things before the internet. Chad and Tyrone and all these theories came from the internet. Three, the only reason you think that is because you keep going after women who you don't qualify for, who only the 20% of men qualify for, aka dime pieces, and you don't realize it because the same channels that convince you you can't get laid because you're not in the top 20% also convinces you to have a mindset of selecting women that's top 20%. 
he would probably never even pay a girl like the girl sitting in next to him interviewing him any attention when a girl like that would most likely talk to him and work with him through his flaws. Maybe motivate him to get a damn job. Go outside and touch grass because he would be going on dates. And that's the part that they leave out. The 80-20 rule really only exists for men who are too delusional to realize they're not in the 20%. Everyone else is a leftover woman. They even had it on one of the memes, a leftover woman, or she's not this or she's not that. Beggars can't be choosers, bruh. You're supposed to be taking what you can get at the end of the day, but you're not doing that. Let's wrap this video up. For all the anger directed outward toward women, there's more directed inward. Incels are dangerous, but mostly to themselves. He's gonna get his dick out, that's what he does. Gets his dick out, shits his pants. He's shitting his pants. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, dude. This is what happens. <laughs> wow. This stunt was one of this guy's recurring jokes. So was suicide. He died at home on July 7th. Coroners haven't yet ruled on a cause of death. In this subculture, people bond over self-loathing. <laughs> Joy says it's therapeutic, but four of his friends have killed themselves. That was probably the biggest thing said in the entire video. She said, in this culture, people bond over self-loathing. And he says it's therapeutic, but four of his friends have deleted themselves. Going back to my Andre 3000. They're yelling selling is a sin, but so is selling young men that selling is a sin if you don't offer new ways to win. A dolphin's gonna shake his fin regardless if he is in or out of water, most important thing for him is to swim. Therefore, they're going online, they're going into these toxic think tanks, think tanks I should say, getting nothing but confirmation bias, not being offered new ways to win. Realistic new ways to win. Six figures, go and get six figures is not a realistic new way to win. It's not. Because most men are not going to achieve that. Everything that would fix the situation is some great long thing that he never has a chance at achieving. Because he's never going to be a 20% guy. And instead of talking about all these other guys who aren't 20% guys, all these ugly guys who get women, all these fat guys who get women, all these broke guys who always staying with a woman. They're just going to tell them, oh, well, you're assed out, bro. These women ain't going to want you. I don't know what to tell you. Then you shouldn't be talking about it. You go into these think tanks. These think tanks are full of nothing but toxicity, negativity. And you go in there and you listen to that, and you hear that all day, and eventually you give up. Or you go on a rampage. If you don't just delete yourself, you delete other people. Take some other people with you. All because you're frustrated over women. And it's funny because these same people talk about all the guys these women are sleeping with. So you can't find no woman who likes you in the era of hoes? In the era of thoughts? You still can't find no woman who likes you. What's the new ways to win, Alex? Simple. Again, as I stated some of them earlier. Get social. Even if you join a support group full of people who have the same mental disorders as you. Get social. Talk to them. Get out of your box. Get a job. Doesn't care. Don't matter what the job is. You're not going to make six figures overnight. I don't give a damn. You make 35000 Trust me when I tell you, there's a woman out there who will work with you. Aim for 50 at bare minimum. That's enough to be good as a bachelor. 75 plus when you're ready to get in a relationship. You can get 50 at an entry level job. But do something. Start working. Start building some type of a purpose. You got passion. He want to host chat rooms every day. How about you host chat rooms that aren't toxic? Host a video game chat room. Host a self-improvement chat room. Do things like that. Get into the gym, get active. Release that stress. Get them feel-good endorphins going. There's various things you can do. Because men, we have a superpower that's not talked about enough. I talk about it on this channel, but it's not talked about enough. And that's that we can attract women in multiple ways. We can use our looks. 
We can use our emotional connections. We can use our mental mentality by teaching them, by leading them, by showing them things they never thought of. And we can use our money if all else fails. The idea is to be balanced enough to have all four, but in reality, you really only need one. One, and the personality and the confidence to be yourself, and you'll be good to go. You'll be good to go. Women don't have that. Women have their looks. It shouldn't be like that. That's what gets a lot of men in trouble, but that's the reality. Women have their looks. They have their looks, and for the men who are smart, they have their personality. But they aren't going to be able to use their emotional intelligence, which most of them don't even have, but the ones who do... They're not going to be able to use their mentality, their ability to teach you something or their wealth of intellect or knowledge. And they aren't going to be able to use their finances to attract men. Men don't care about those three things. So women generally overwhelmingly have to use their looks. Hence why they always run around in tight clothing with a bunch of makeup on and weaves and extensions and heels and all this other stuff. Because they know they have to use their looks. We as men have the superpower of having four different ways to attack women. To attract them. And you can't figure out one. Well I'm not in the top 20%. You ain't got to be in the top 20% of everything. If you can just be in the top 50% of one thing. Or you could be in the bottom 30% of everything. If you can't master none. Become a jack of all trades. Let that breathe. Read it back. If you can't master one. Then become a jack of all trades. If you can master one. Then just master one and work off that. But these guys who run these channels and they constantly show the worst type of women, constantly talk this 80-20 rule, constantly talk about how they're not going to want you if you don't have this, if you can't do this, and you won't do this, and you can't do that. They're making it worse. And even if they're not directly telling you to go out and harm women or harm yourself, they might as well be because you got a problem, you're in a dark place, and instead of pulling you out with light, they're giving you more dark stuff. Because they don't realize part of your mental problem is looking for the confirmation bias. Part of your mental problem is dwelling in negativity all the time. So they're not helping you by giving you more of that. But they don't realize that. That's the problem and that's the issue. That's how the internet created incels. And that's how the internet strengthens incels. By making a think tank to positively reinforce people to be stuck in this mentality. Instead of trying to help them come at it. Anyways, that's my thoughts on that. I am Alex and I am out. Peace.